All right, here we go. Here we go. It is another high in Arizona at the High Lounge, and we've got our guests here, Vars Cannabis. Go ahead, guys. Uh, introduce yourselves in the camera. What's up, guys? I'm Davey Basilla. I'm Joey Basilla. Vars yes. Family and Cultivation. That's right. Even almost said it in synchronization right there. Who's the bro? <laughs> That's how you know, man. Nice. So, Real brothers. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Very dope, man. Appreciate you guys coming out here. Um, you know, I got introduced to you guys when you came out with um, Arizona Cheapers for the uh, was it anniversary. An anniversary. That's yeah, right. That was the first one yet. And uh, and got to you know heard that you were uh, family. You know, it was a family situation. And yeah, family run and operated. You know, and that that's I love to hear that in Arizona because I don't think that we have enough of the of the family. Small you know, small business and things like that. And you hear almost that it's hard to for the companies like that to get on the shelf. So uh, so. Man, love, love that we're going to be able to sit down uh, and hear the story. Um, you know, uh, I guess the, to first start out would be, you know, um, what's the Arizona story? Have you guys always been out here in Arizona? We have, yeah. Family mm -hmm. has always been uh, Tucson-oriented. My dad from Phoenix. Hey. Uh, yeah, go Phoenix. Mm -hmm. But uh, he moved to Tucson for uh, U of A college. Um, through, he met my mom, and uh, family's been there ever since. Uh, so, yeah, we like Tucson. I think it's... an you know, always been a fun town. Um, I think a lot of stuff's changing and more development and stuff. So it's cool okay. to see in the hometown and whatnot. What high schools? Uh, Sabino. Sabino yeah. High School. I know that's uh, that's almost Different like cats. where people like to, you know, lo locate a lot of people is uh, by that high school. Right by Mount Lemmon, which is nice. It's okay. got a really yeah. pretty view. Nice. So, I was actually in Tucson a little bit. I went to CBO, Canyon Del Oro, nice. a little bit. So uh, that's where my know, mom went. I got, yeah. Okay. I got yeah. a little history out there in Tucson. So, uh Okay, so cool, man. So you guys uh, uh, growing up in Tucson, and what year? Uh, what what um, you know? Did you graduate? What, no, cool. Yeah, 2012. 2012. Yeah. So okay, cool. So like uh, we're looking at now. Did, were you guys always growing? Uh, like you know, in, in high school because it was kind of what like uh, we we that was when we were med, right? We kind of yeah. crossed over to the med, and shortly, I think right when I graduated was when like. Med was just happening. You okay. Know? I think a year after I graduated, and it's kind of funny. Like our story growing up, my dad was always like not a proponent of cannabis, which is kind of funny to see. Like later on, we all got involved in the cannabis business. You know, well, so like literally in high school, um, you know, there's times where like you're getting kicked out of the house for getting caught. No weed shit. And stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I put two and two together actually. So when I started high school, I never really got punished that much for it. Yeah. Because that's when I was the guinea pig. Yeah, you were, <laughs> and that's when he started getting into the industry. Yeah. was when I started high school so okay yeah. nice so you, you you were able to like get out of some shit because you was passing on to bro yeah okay so he's older bro I'm yeah older he bro. is okay yeah. there we go mm -hmm. nice uh it's a four-year difference 31 20 27 yeah okay yeah, almost 27 yeah. yeah nice dude all Same right enough. so you get out of high school uh cannabis okay so who who brought the cannabis in the in the realm of you guys so you know, it's funny, my dad actually, okay, you're he's, he's the businessman, he's always had, you know, other businesses, had money to kind of invest in stuff. He met, you know, uh, Dimitri Downing, who's, you know, part of Mita, yep. and uh, Dimitri was kind of the matchmaker, got him involved with other people that were wanting to be in the industry, and oh, then uh, he saw it as more of a good business decision. And then, Shout out to um, Mita and Dimitri, you know, that's what his goal is, is, is bringing uh, and making the cannabis industry uh, accessible to you know the consumers and or people that are interested in being in the business so that, that's cool to hear that success story that yeah. your pops was uh, it, you know me to work for him in a sense sure. so. and then we always had a passion for it you know like once i moved out had a little you know closet home grows and uh wasn't very good back then that's for sure but uh, that's funny. always loved growing you know and just uh being around cannabis and what it kind of brought to the table so to see us get into an environment where we started investing into it and then we had you know our two dispensaries then uh had a small little grow operation that was like a big warehouse but uh it was empty there was just a shell and this is like this is the fam is your pops yeah mm -hmm. yeah no shit what dispensary uh the prime leaf prime in, leaf in tucson yeah okay man that's yeah so we started dope. the prime leaf uh chain and we got one in, in california and blythe too but um we always kind of operated the uh, tucson ones how uh like was it difficult for pops to get the dispensary like what was like the app that was it like you wanted like the ping pong balls that like yeah now, he's a lucky guy like we actually bought our first one from bloom uh in like 2013 rainbow collective when they were definitely a lot cheaper. Um, and then okay. he's won four licenses in the lotteries. 
So he's. Damn, <laughs> good shit. Look at you guys, man. So some Arizona. Got the luck of the job. Damn, the ball. that's yeah, cool, do. man. Like, I believe that's. I believe that that's what like is intent was is to go to people who are from Arizona who are lovers of cannabis like that man. so fuck it this is dope man yeah it's it's, it's, it's cool how it all un- unraveled in, in, into God to where we're at today right you know? because now like you guys have been like now it's a family business uh, and so this is like your this is like the next generation of bars are, are like so did pops ever have a brand did he pop out just prime leaf was the okay. brand for the okay. dispensaries and we always had our grow as like a vertically integrated grow for just our two stores in tucson so we never had a brand that was like wholesale outside of our you know kind of retail chain okay. and then once we sold the prime leaf uh this last year george Root, um who owns the halo and now, now okay. he has our our uh our prime leaf stores um that's when we had to you know we decided to keep the grow and that's what we love doing and wanted to build something off that so we uh, built bars after that once we separated it. Okay, so Prime. so now Prime Leaf, uh, it's not in the family, but you, in the sale, you guys were able to make sure that you were able to keep it up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful move. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, you're doing what we love. You're doing what you love, basically. What? Oh, man, that's fucking dope, yeah, man. Sure. Mm-hmm. I don't have the little applause things. I'd be smacking the shit out yeah. of the applause <laughs> things right there for you guys, man. That's fucking dope. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so how long then... How long has VARS been uh, out now? It's, it's Started from, in September. Of okay, I was going to say, I'm not fairly new. Eight, so. eight months, yeah. uh, or no, 10 months is going to be uh, next month. Yeah. Damn, Damn. nice. So. Yeah. I feel like, you know, with where the industry's at, you know, it's very, uh, you know, saturated. Um, new, starting a new brand at that time was tough, you know. But I think with where we're at right now, I feel I feel good about it. And I feel like where, where our traction's going, um, it's, it's, it's going up, so... I'm excited for the future. I'm sh- I'm smoking some spur sh- sherb cake right now. <laughs> now uh, I love it. You know I'm big on if it smacks, if the turps hit. That's, I'm a big crossover person. It can smell a certain way. It can feel a way. It can break up. Whatever, whatever. How does it smoke? And I'm telling you right now, this sherb cake is smoking. Nice, you guys. Thank you. Good shit. Okay, so did you guys grow while you're at the prime leaf in a sense? While like prime leaf was around, where you guys finding yourselves in the cultivation yeah that was our bread and butter i've worked in the stores a little bit but like i always had my heart and soul to grow worked under a couple like head growers that we had hired and this is back when we were just an empty warehouse with like 10 grow tents. so we were basically like a big home grow on a ship for selling our dispensaries and that's where we really learned how to grow um and then we in that time frame we were kind of building out and, and kind of finalizing our plans for the actual build out for the actual grow that we're in now okay. so um it was a lot of good timing for us to like play it out in the safe way in the tents that wasn't on a big scale yet okay um yeah pause for the cause while it hits that blunt. <laughs> thank you let's go that was actually before i uh joined the team too because uh once we started building out the warehouse it was like towards the end of it um is when i joined and it was just three of us so it was me davy and uh, my other manager jenna um, so it's just the three of us wow. trying out the first run of flower. <coughs> wow. In the um, new facility. In the new facility. Oh, man, that's cool. Posh for the cost as well. New facility. It's so like when you guys are out there and you started this project with bars, I mean with three of you, were you guys more so like just like passion projects? Um, um what what was the goal when you launched? Yeah, I think we both fell in love with what we were doing, you know, and, and bettering your craft. You know, you always start somewhere and, you know, to see that gradual, you know, rise in, in, in uh, product and, and just what you're doing is, is addicting almost to this extent, you know. So that was part of it. And then just wanting us to be our own thing, separate okay. than, than Prime, um, and kind of get our product in other stores. Okay. Now that we can wholesale it, um, you know, to, to other dispensaries and kind of share that product is uh what we wanted to do yeah we love the product you know we love the community that kind of comes with it and i think it just was easy for us because you know we love what we yeah you're smokers you guys find yourself (laughs) out there like now what are some of the the genetics that let's talk about genetics then right because i think that's a big part of making yourself um, a commodity out here in the in the valley now, which feels good because it wasn't always like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like, it, and I mean, you could probably you know tell the story better than I could, but I felt when we first started having dispensaries and, and, and cannabis grown here in Arizona, there wasn't a, a, a focus on 
quality. Now we flash forward here in 2024, I feel like quality is a factor. Yep. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. So, and I think the genetics are, are um, you know, a key point to start. Um, you know, how do you guys feel about genetics and, and, and what does VARS do about, you know? That yeah, situation? I think that's, you know, almost everything really, you know, because a big problem when I took over the grow, we had all these old strains that just didn't hit, didn't grow well, and you got to get good genetics to be able to do what you can actually do. You know? oh, I've always said you can, like, make a strain, you know, X amount better by being a grower, maybe 30%, but really all that it can do is 70% of itself if you just do it right, you know? Mm -hmm. Nice. It's good to hear a percentage like that. I appreciate that because, like... I, you know, we could talk about it and whatnot, but, but like that puts it in perspective, you know, like the genetics matter. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah, I think, you know, a next step for us is yeah. something that we want to do in the future, near future, is have our own separate kind of wing at the facility, um, separate than our, our main production rooms for breeding, pheno you know, hunting, R&D stuff. You know, then we we're, you know, that's when it gets really exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to love that R&D. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, and, and uh, that's one of my favorite things. That's one of the things I think if I was that I had a facility like that would be the R&D where it's like, you know, you know, you've got your, your staple brand or your uh, genetics rolling, but then you're pheno hunting these other ones. And like, it's just almost like, I mean, it's truly hunting, right? Cause you can find something that is a keeper, right? Like, what is it like? How often have you found keepers like in just your history of, of being in, in cultivation? You definitely find a lot less keepers than right? you do, you know, you know, not, but, um, We've been pretty lucky though with some some of them. Lucy Co. Yeah, definitely hooked for that. it up. Uh, all those strawberry guava crosses, okay, uh, have been really nice. The dulce de fresa that we have, yeah, um, lots of good rosin yeah. strains. They okay. all wash really well. Nice. So, Lucy Co. You know, if you're looking for washing strains, check them out for sure. Damn, Damn. there it is. <laughs> now, with speaking of that, like, do you guys, you know, what's the percentage of growing for flour as opposed to growing for, you know, hatch? yeah, I think that's changing as we evolve our sales, you know, and seeing what percent, you know. Uh, sales is going towards rosin and flour and we've been definitely increasing the rosin a lot ever yeah. since we started production has definitely definitely increased. yeah because uh i believe you launched actually rosin recently right so yeah yeah, yeah. um what, what was the reason uh, that you guys was that demand for uh yeah to start the rosin yeah um it was honestly because we started uh before we were bars and we were just doing the house uh like brand at prime okay um, and it was me and our head extractor now uh marshall yeah he uh this was back oh man i think like 2020 and uh yeah when he got hired he would always kind of show me like these videos people pressing and washing and uh, it's just kind of like, we should do this kind right. of thing. He's like, uh, do you see the uh, crystals here on these buds? Yeah. No, we should be washing. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we would stay after work and kind of like, we started with the uh, sift, uh, like Keith, basically. No first. shit. Uh -huh. Started doing that just to test it out. It didn't like really waste too much product. Uh, and then we did our first couple washes. Honestly, it was kind of funny. Uh, just like the first test ones that we did, because, you know, we're just getting into it. So we have... Like these PVC pipes mixing oh, the water in it. Take videos of this. Oh, for sure. I yeah, love yeah. it. Got to record. Yeah, it. you know. That's, I mean, hey, man, you're gonna look back and say, yep. Yeah, you know, we started with what we wanted, needed to, to get it, test things out before you make that investment. I mean, let's talk about investment, right? I mean, it costs a lot of money to do what you guys are doing, and to, to, open, to, to be a licensed brand in Arizona, just the packaging alone, you know, and and the time it takes, like. You said it's been 10 months, you know, how many months before you even were able to sell product to a dispensary? You know, that was a hard part too, from going strictly kind of vertical with our own dispensaries, um, getting new accounts after that, because it happened pretty quick. Um, that was a, a definitely a, an anxiety and a, a fear in itself, you know? right? Because once you have product, but you know, it has to go somewhere. <laughs> right. And, and, and it's a tight industry. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you got a good product, it definitely helps. Okay. But um, it's still it's still tough out there. With sure. with you guys being in the industry, your family being what it you know in the industry and, and having helped so many people get their product on the shelf, right? Like right. I would hope that those guys, you know, the, the expenses out here were were you know accommodating yeah, a little bit. Like, where, where did you have some like you know I feel like a head start at all? Like you I know, think it helped definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it didn't. Nice. You know, it's, it was still hard. It's still hard, but um, yeah. it definitely has its benefits. Okay. Yeah. Now, so there's how many dispensaries out there that are active right now? Do you guys know off the top of that? Like just a general number? You probably know. Ah, uh, shoot. It's been a little bit since. Like, oh, probably 90, 100. Maybe? I think 120. 120? Yeah. 130 maybe now with the, with the other 
the ones that just got given out. Okay. So something in that range. So how many how many shelves are you guys on right now? We're in about 40 shelves. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, hey, for starting out 10 months ago, you know, I feel like that's that seems like, I, I mean, I, I feel like, yeah. you feel good about that? I do, or? yeah. I'm yes. happy with it. It's definitely, uh, you know, there's always the one for more. But, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, you always I, want that I think more. just starting out you know, 10 months ago, it's a good spot to be in. Yeah. You gotta yeah, give yourself yeah, grace. Yeah, that's good shit. Yeah, man. You know, I, I say that because we I've interviewed people on here. Uh, and they were trying to get into one dispenser. Yeah. And like, it ended up buckling. You know what I mean? And it's like... It can be frustrating. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, that's what I hear. So, like, I love that you guys are out of, uh, you know, that many options. What are some of the ones that, like, people can find you? Because, like, I mean, people are listening, and, and I'm telling them over here, go on, get this uh, this guy right <laughs> here. That, yeah, that show cake. <laughs> These are out, right? Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, cool, cool, cool. So, where's some of the spots? So, uh, Soul Flower, you know, all nine locations of Soul. Beautiful. Um, we're in uh, Sticky Saguaro. I love Sticky Saguaro. Sticky is tight. Um, Shout to Sticky. Yeah, we're in Superior. Uh, deep Deeply rooted out here in Phoenix. Oh, deeply rooted. Shout out to them. Cool, man. Oh, man, that's awesome. All right, cool. We got a lot of questions here, though. We're going to get into this. Uh, um, how many strains right now are genetics do you guys have in your vault? There's like 30, 33. 30, yeah. Probably like 20 are in full rotation, and then the other ones are just like we're kind of feeling them out, doing some test runs. So we're talking moms, then. You got like, you know, like 33 uh uh, strains chilling in a mom room. Yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. Man. I love man. the mom room. That's we one of my favorite rooms. Definitely nice. need more mom space for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's on the plans because we have plans this year to build out some more space. Okay, we're doing another mom room, um, an actual bigger production room for trimming, um, okay. other types of like manufacturing stuff, um, and then R and D flower, which we're excited about. Oh yeah, and then some more dry space. Cause... Yeah, we would love to do something with you on this R and D uh, flower. You know, I always uh. I, because because I believe that uh, when you get your pheno hunts and stuff like that, um, let me go ahead and uh, pass our guy over the next one to get going. Let's do this uh, GMO OG. Uh, thank you guys so much for bringing over these strains to parking us up over here high in Arizona. Man, what made you uh, bring these uh, these three? I think they're all a little different. You know, the uh, Detroit Muscle uh, GMO cross with the side OG. Uh, so we have the uh, super booth. Like, who doesn't love super oh, the booth? super booth? Yes. Yeah, this is the super booth right here. That super booth and shirt cake. I think they've been some of our favorites since, like, I just wish the shirt cake washed. You know, I know. She would make some great rods. I know. Which one? Shirt cake. Shirt cake. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she just. <laughs> like a woman on wire. Yeah. yeah. We're like, <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, so you guys said that it kind of depends on demand when it comes to, like, the flower and the uh, rods and what you're growing and stuff like that. So where are we, where are we at currently? I think we're probably about 25%. Going towards fresh frozen for, okay. for rosin. There we go. That so, flower heads out there. I'm like, I feel like it's a dying breed to be a flower head where you just want to. You want to, Yeah, you still want to smoke flower, and uh, oh, and uh, I love to hear 75 percent of it is now still with you guys. Uh, flower. So 33 strains. Like, how many are like? Do you have any strains that are just constantly? in rotation like it'll, it'll always be or, or there's probably about 16 that are like super solid like, no shit you're right? always in. always growing it no Pretty matter much. what yeah. and then how many are in rotation from that like how many strains at a time do you have going yeah we have two big flower rooms uh, kind of big one room's 100 lights the other one's 78 um mm -hmm. and we basically ping pong those rooms once a month and okay kind of like one big harvest a month um, so like with does that so like out of the 33 you have, 16 are your staples. So at least like, you know, the 16 or so, whatever. Um, so do you have like all of those kind of like uh, in a little amount? Or do you say, okay, we're going to do eight this run in this room and then we'll do the other eight or so? Or Yeah, it's always in bigger amounts. So like usually okay. those 16 are in rotation. They're out for like, you know, a little bit sometimes. Okay. But um, then you just kind of put them in as you want to kind of get some more. Kind of, uh, and stuff yeah. yeah, more yeah. options. Mm -hmm. More options, right? I mean, uh, it More seems. Options. Yeah, I mean uh, that that seems to be the name of the game, but it's and it's it's important, but it's got to also be scary, I imagine, right? Because like you guys are, you know, operating a business, and the business has uh, you know a lot of bills. You guys have a team. Everyone's got to you know get paid, and it's like you know to put your your a lot of effort into a strain, and then it, it not be well received with. Uh, you know the the community oh, yeah damn you know I, I, it's always like oh, right oh, my oh, yeah <laughs> have you experienced that in the history where like you you put your time and effort into a strain and then you put it out and it was just like a fucking miss 
Yeah, I would say there's been a few. Yeah, you know, we've had some... we all like something about it, and you know, maybe it's just a harder train to grow something yeah. too. You know. Um, Can you give me any uh, strain name examples? Uh, I mean, sour diesel didn't work good for no us. No shit. Yeah, yeah. But our grow we have a pretty small canopy for height. Okay. Um, since it's sometimes double stacked and flowered, um, so that one was just too stretchy. Um, okay. It was just hard for us to manage. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, and that was actually one of like the first trains we ever flowered out. No oh, shit. Oh too, so. damn. Yeah. First one, you're like. Huh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now we're gonna flip it. Now, what are some of like the one? What's the strain that like you know you love to, to grow? Your favorite strain that this is the one that you always grow it. Always, always turns out great. Yeah. Yeah. And you get great feedback from it. Everyone's like, oh my god. What's yours? I mean, the super boof, honestly. Yeah. No shit. Uh huh. Yeah, she's well, yeah. one. That's a great flower. That, I mean, some new flower. ones. You know, I would say, at least for the rosin for me, the De- the uh, Detroit Muscle. Oh, has been one of my new favorites. It, you know, when you say rosin, that's because you're the concentrate guy. You 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 pushed for uh, the concentrate like in, within the family structure when it, when it was prime. Were you the one that said, "Hey guys, we need to push over to this concentrates"? Did you bring that to the table? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so would you find yourself being more in the in, in hash than so flower? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I definitely on the near. Yeah, <laughs> smoking rosin pretty much. I mean. Every day. No, I'm mostly like a evening smoker. I like to kind of stay a little more clear headed during the day okay. and uh, just get shit done. I'm moving pretty fast. Yeah. But, uh, Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And that's the way, you know, because the answer with it, with it being focused on the hash, and now, now I remember talking to you earlier saying that this, your bro was the, you know, the, the hash guy. Yeah, yeah, the hash guy. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot me into it. Though. What do you feel about, like, uh, you know, yeah. competitions. You know, we got some coming up here. I think the big one for Arizona really is going to be the uh, – uh, uh, why can I think of it right now? It's uh, the, the Cup – Earl Cup. Sorry, Earl oh, Cup. My sure. bad, my yeah. bad. That's like, I feel like that one, that one, that's the big one I feel out here. I know there's a lot of little cups out here and things like that, but, like, everyone knows about, everyone knows about the Earl Cup. It seems like it's been catching uh, – when it comes to flower even, I don't know about, like – so much on the concentrate side, uh, it seems like it's it's hit a, I don't know, flower though. You guys plan on uh, entering any of these cups? Yeah, I think we talked about it. This next one might be our first one. Yeah, Here we go. So, Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I love it, man. You guys, uh, you know, it's cool just to see, uh, you know, head to head and like little cups like that. It's a fun competition. I think it, you know, brings a, a attention to not only the brands that are that have attention but then it helps bring brands that aren't so you know um have that much awareness and get a little more shine up here so totally yeah yeah so yeah, that's tight you guys have like some straight i probably shouldn't maybe say huh did you keep that kind of secret or are you like no we're going super boo yeah it's, yeah it's kind of undecided yeah for sure no yeah um definitely honestly we got some good options though. yeah we got some good options so got it Okay, this Just is the which one we OG. That's the Detroit Muscle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a breeder out of Michigan. Okay, damn mm-hmm. shit. How did you end up with a strain from Michigan? Uh, just uh, knowing people and seeing what, you know, different things. And, you know, he's kind of a smaller breeder, too, like more of like okay. a basic breeder. And I like I like supporting small guys and, and seeing, nice. you know, what, what's coming out. And I've seen things he's produced. So I was like, let's do it. Yeah, and honestly, it's like all the strains have been... Killer. Yeah. Do you guys like uh, kind of um, you know hunt obviously in house, but do you like travel or do you like go to like other cups out of state? Like, you know, what's the life's like of, of cannabis uh, cultivation owners? You know, or what? How do you stay on top of like the genetics like that? I think it's really just networking, you know, like okay. even like social media is, you know, like Instagram, um, I think is a big place for people to kind of network and kind of see what people are doing, talk about it, um, Reddit, you know, has some stuff too. But um, yeah, I think just seeing those those uh, combos and who's who's something that, that's worth looking at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Davey's really been the, the social network guy. He's, he's been killing on that part. You've, you've been getting all the genetics, you know. Yeah, it's been, it's, uh, it's almost addicting in that sense too. Like, right. you know, what's, what's the next kind of a unicorn I can find or, or something like that. You Man, know? Yeah. I can, I have a very small scale of what you're talking about. Like when we went wreck, you know, I wanted to start growing. And then when I started buying seeds and genetics, you're right, it's like, my now my like seed locker is like, you know, it's got hundreds of seeds in there. That couldn't help, but like, you hear about a strain and you're like, oh man, I want that in my locker. Yeah. Get that in the locker. 
It's so, always. Well, then, with that being the case, do you guys have your next like genetic map out? You know, and if so, like how long is it mapped out? Yeah, I wouldn't say mapped out. I think once we start, you know, seeing what we ran the last time that was new, and that we kind of weed out the ones that were like, now let's not this one. Once it gets past a little test run, um, and just keep making room for new things. So I think every. Every quarter, you know, looking at, all right, what three to four um, new stuff should we try out? Yeah. Interesting. You know, part of it's, like, how it grows, how it sells. Uh, I think for us, too, like, we have a height restriction in our flower rooms. Okay, like so, you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if we can train it, you know, uh, well, then it's good. But some, some are tough, you know. They just want to keep growing, keep stretching. Okay, so what is the max amount of strains you can go at a time so one room um it, it could change we have 10 rows in flower room one uh, with two levels to each row so right now we're doing one strain per row okay so in that room 10 strains and then flower two it's eight, eight rows okay so but, uh, we're thinking of doing different strains on top and bottom it just it does add some challenges okay uh, losing some control just got to be on top of it a little yeah. more because there's twice as many right because so. the reason I ask is like, as you guys are phenol hunting, at some point you're gonna have a strain that you love, but you love them all. So now you're like, oh shit! Now I got this new one. <laughs> so you know? true. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a constant battle. You know? yeah. like, <laughs> was that the right choice or not? Yeah, you know? Exactly. Right. And then every time you kill something off, yeah. you think about it. You're like, it's the best run she's ever had. No, it is literally yeah. every time. Best run is yeah. the last run. Um, what about like if other, uh, how do you feel about like other cultivators having your guys the same genetics or like, you know, you know, yeah. per permanent markers everywhere. popular everywhere. Right? Super right. boop even, you know, super boop. Yeah. Like, so like, do you guys, you know, try to stick away from that or do you, or do you target it because it's, it is popular? Yeah. I think sometimes you want to target it, you know, or sometimes you get an early like super boop What's an early one, and then it just it really got off even bigger. Yeah, you guys are the ones to bring it out here, right? <laughs> Not quite. Who knows? But hey, I, I, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it. It's nice. cool to see it, like everyone's you know different uh, runs of it too. Yeah, that's um, true. Uh -huh. Right. For sure. It's gonna have some some friendly competition too. You know. Yeah. Yeah, because it has two sorts. Up. It has like one you can sell more because everyone knows about it, that's or or two you know it's getting almost played out. It's like it, it's a quick switch. Yeah. You know that's what sucks about it. Like I've, I've dealt with that <laughs> in my own retail game out here, where it's like you'll carry something, it's hot, and then all of a sudden it's not. Yeah. Uh, the heady nail game is like that actually. If you uh, the, for the connoisseurs of glass out there. Uh, heavy nails are hard to keep up with sometimes. They just keep switching. Then it's all, now it's the long barrel ones. I don't know. Um, yep. Um, okay, so you guys got uh, hash going. We've got flour. I mean, are we going to see some hash holes? I mean, you got both of the products. It's a popular uh, product out there right now. There's been lots of talk about it for sure. Yeah. You know, and we've done a little bit of R&D, just, you know, to know that we can do it. Nice. Yeah. There we go. Uh, and, yeah. and, and I think working with people that are doing it, you know, like I sell uh, certain bee buds to uh, different people that do pastels and venti yeah. roots. One of them. Oh, shots. That's right. Yeah. Shots to those. So those are great guys. Love supporting those guys. Cool. Um, so yeah, right now we're working with some people that are doing it separately, but in, we're kind of uh, supporting with product. And I stuff. love that. So that's. I think that's nice a cool to segue to. though, because you guys do uh, a lot, actually, a lot of collabs. You know, uh, um, the inventing room. What are some of the other collabs that you guys have done? Done leapers. Yeah. Leapers. Uh -huh. yep. That's yeah. I've seen that. That's uh -huh. dope. Yeah. And then so it's like those two primary, those two primarily leapers. I would say mostly room. those, and then we're doing more in-house pre rolls. We're starting cool. a half ounce line of like smalls and bigs. Pretty that's soon. That's cool, man. Ten months. Yeah. Uh, networking like that and getting out there and uh, and pushing, man. So, um, okay, so nice, man. I got a bunch of uh, things going on over here. A lot of people always like me to ask uh, the nutrients that you guys, you know, like a lot of people, you know, care about well, what's what's like the how is it being grown, you know? So can you talk a little bit about, you know, the, maybe the, the soil and the nutrients and the, and the process? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the nutrient line that we're we using is uh, Athena. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a popular one right now. It's yeah. popular. It is. But, you know, it's for a reason. You no, know, facts. I, I mean, love, yeah. I love how simple it is. Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, we, we're using, like, the um, big, like, batch. Uh, what are they? Like, the drums, 55-gallon drums mm -hmm. to kind of do the concentrated mix in. And, you know, we have a, the grow link 
fertigation system that uh, does all the irrigation and kind of mixing. Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. So, so you guys uh, set it up all ultra nice for yourselves over for here. Sure. Got a nice uh, it's an automation. Check nice. it out. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Cool. Time, dude. Yeah. Oh, and if I'm not mistaken, you have uh, uh, our guy. Uh, oh man, what's our homie? Uh, is it? Uh, uh, who's, 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 who's helping you guys sell? Uh, oh, Evan. Evan. Yeah, Evan. 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 Yeah, Ethan. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. He, yeah. Man. Shout out to him. Uh, uh, you know, I know he's. Uh, um, he pumps you guys up. Speaks highly of you guys out there. Yeah, he's worked for some. I think the biggest places in AZ, and I think. We've always wanted to get more help on how do we get better, you know, so yeah. there's a way to learn new things and get another perspective on it. Evan's been that guy for us. So. Yeah, yeah. He's, right. he's a good dude. He is. Um, what are some of the things that when you are, you know, because I know that you mentioned since it is a, a multi-tier, you got to worry about kind of height and stuff like that. But what about, what are some of the deal breakers or makers when it comes to uh, uh, genetic making it to the finish line and making it in their jars. I would say, you know, there's a different, you know, a couple check marks it has to get. You know, one, how does it grow for us? Like, how difficult? Because um, that's going to affect the other levels a little bit. But, you know, some things we look for is just bag of fuel, obviously. You know, um, a nose is like super crucial. <laughs> You know, I feel like if it doesn't have a nose and smoke um, well, you know, like, what's the point of growing it? Yeah, you know, come on, gotta, that'll take gotta smoke it. Well. Come on. Yeah. And then, um, any other any other factors? Um, I mean, washing. Yeah, nice wash. Wash, wash yep. Yield, uh, yield too. is a big one. Yeah, you know, like, yield for sure. That's huge. You know, you can grow great weed, but if, if it gets you more in your, you know, in your run, like that's huge for us. Yeah. Do you guys grow anything because it's your personal favorites? Oh man, they're all personal, so right? Because like, like, I mean, huh? I guess that's what bars is in a sense, right? Your guys' personal favorites. Sure. Sure. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I never even thought about that in a sense, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Shit. A lot of our team too, I feel like, gives in really good input, you know, yeah. on how it is because they're, you know, help and grow it. Yeah, help and grow it. They're uh, in the community. You know, Damn, that's cool, man. They have some smokers. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I think about when it comes like, man, if I had a cultivation, man, I'd be like, like a kid in a candy store. Sure. Be like, fuck it is sometimes, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 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 like, and then just uh, uh, just constantly uh, exploring cannabis. Like, um, how did you feel about, you know, with them now discussing it being rescheduled and things like that? Um, any worries that like they might change things up? There's a lot of discussions about it, you know. Yeah. But like, where do you guys stand? You know, I'm not too worried at this point. I mean, you know, there's definitely some a lot of good things that already come with it, but then it's like you know, other things have to change too, or other things could happen. So there's always that what if. But yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking about it too much. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, and I always felt like we've always found a way to make sure that. Cannabis, good quality cannabis is being grown. And I don't think that'll ever stop. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's interesting. We'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. Um, so, with you guys, you mentioned earlier about you guys were basically like growing in tents before and then yeah. moving warehouse in the get go. Yeah. So, like, what are some of the difficulties from moving from like a tent to like a fucking warehouse with still? It was, uh, you know, a lot of good things because, like, back in the day, there was like, not a lot of AC for us working in the tents. It was just a shell of a building. But, okay. So, like, the luxury has gone up a lot. Um, but it did pose different challenges of, like, we used to grow with HPS hoods. We moved to, like, double stack LED. Um, and, like, with that big change, you know, there's always a big learning curve of, like, how do you run environments differently? With, is with is LEDs. the bud different? Uh, it's definitely better than it was. I, I, you know, I think no we just have better okay. systems that can control um, you know, what you need to more, have, have that flexibility and stuff. Okay. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's better, different. Um, it took a while to get here, but... No shit. Yeah. Nice, because like HPS, right? That's what we're... High pressure sodium. Yeah, yeah, like you hear like that one is like, you know, oh, it's like the sun and things like that. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like... Uh, More yellow burns, burns hot. Yeah, it does burn hot. That's it? Yeah. So that's cool, man. Uh, what other, like, uh, was there difficulties in like, you know, looking over the cannabis? Because now you hear like there's programs that you can get that'll like fucking 
look over your trees for us. I visited a, a grow uh, last week and they had this system. It's called Neat Leaf. Okay. Oh, and it, it, can, it can measure and predict like yields and stuff. Yeah, I met, I've and seen also it tells you like it'll pinpoint when there's like deficiencies in your garden and shit like that. So like when you scaled up, how many people you got on the team and like, you know, like as it was it a difficult thing now trying to manage how I mean what I mean as you doubled your plants or tripled yeah, your plants yeah. or probably more than that even you know yeah, damn no shit man yeah well honestly with the two rooms right now I feel like you know it's easy enough you know, for us to just walk through it and check it out and see what's going on yeah and cool. it's it's, it's yeah. still small enough to have a lot of control cool for sure yeah, for and sure. that's the, the cool thing about our size where um, it's a good size where I think the market's at and then we can kind of grow from this as you know um, we see fit yeah cool man nice that's and that's cool like I think. Uh, in my opinion, the craft crop, right, is always like the the favorite out there. And you, I again, I see the quality of cannabis coming up in Arizona, and I think it's cool. When I smoked your guys' stuff that day, that first time you came out, I was like, oh, and you were like, oh man, we're a family business. Yeah. I was like, no shit. I'm like, what? I was like. Damn, we need to talk about this. So it's like uh, it's very cool to here we are. yeah to hear about like you know uh, just uh, just how organic and root from AZ it really is, man. How many people on the team? We have about twenty. Yeah. I think now, Fuck 20 yeah. yeah! Fuck yeah! Including my sister who just uh, left Raytheon. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. The sis is now she's on. She's helping this. on like more back end accounting stuff. There we go. Nice. Keeping yeah. stuff organized. Nice. Now, so. Gotta have yeah. that. Now it's a true family business. <laughs> Gotta have that. Exactly. Now, no, I love that, man. Um, you know, with it, with it being bros and the in the business and stuff like that, you know, um, how's it been? Uh, you know, working together in the cannabis industry uh, as as uh, bros, you know, because I know like. I have an older bro, you know, sometimes, you know, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, what's it been like? <laughs> it's Honestly, been super been easy. Great. Yeah. No, That's yeah. cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, We're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> working with my best You're friend, right. you know? That's <laughs> dope. I love that. Yeah. Now, because, like, you know, you could run into a lot of things here in the industry, you know, a lot of, like, uh, you see stories about, you know, people, uh, you know, just not the best, you know, uh, in, in this industry. And with, you know, having some trust behind, you know, and having family in the damn, it's got to it's gotta feel real, real good. Um, who are some of uh, the people in, like, do you do any market research? You know, are you out there, like, smoking other brands to kind oh, of see sure. where you're at? Yeah, you yeah. have to kind of see, you know, you know, to an extent what the competition is. But, you know, there's yeah. always that kind of good competition of, like, nice. you know seeing people stuff you're like all right let's you know how do we get better or like nice. you know something like that you know you can use that as a like motivation like lights of fire lights of fire yeah, yeah. In, in a good way you know it's like yeah. we want to be up there too so who are some of the brands that you would like or that you that you have respect for in uh in arizona cannabis yeah i've always loved grow science you know they present nice. the bar in arizona potent planet i think is nice. a one out of two on yeah um you know there's a, there's a lot of good ones um, in both cities i think more it's, there's more of them coming at Tucson, you know, more recently, which is kind of cool. I was actually going to ask, yeah, because I, I don't know, man. I feel like right now Tucson's gotten a nice little, like, wave of buzz. Uh, not only is it uh, you guys that are doing your thing, uh, Fino, uh, and then I know that uh, Canna Co uh, Connections out there doing um, the Evil. Yeah, Halo like, out there. Uh, yep, uh, the Halo, Abundant. Um, and there's one I'm missing, I feel like, um, and I'm sorry if I'm missing you. Let me know. Let me know I missed you. And, uh, why is this? What's going on in Tucson? Talk to me about what, why is, why is, uh, cannabis all of a sudden being grown hot fire out in Tucson? Yeah, I don't know. The I guess late to the party or something. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yo, I think that like there might be a little rough in the money here when it comes to now Tucson and Phoenix battling a little bit. So it's like, uh, I mean, hey, you know, it's we a friendly competition. Yeah, 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 it's always good. It's yeah, cool, sure. man. And and for smokers, it's like, you know, I think like, you know, it's cool to see Tucson getting that love. Uh, like I said, I have a little bit of ties out there, so it's like still root for Tucson and Arizona in general. Um, but uh, yeah, just noticeably, I'm like, yeah, Tucson, and it's a vibe out there. You guys got a few lounges going on out there. Yeah. Stellar Lounge is one of them. I saw, you know, I know Ruben's just opened too. Ruben's Lounge. Mm -hmm. That one looks pretty cool. That one is cool. That one looks dope. Yeah, I see him. I watch him. He's just like, yo. 
I got the karaoke machine. <laughs> Let's go. Get out there and watch that karaoke. And he's got playoffs going. He's probably, I bet you they got the playoffs right now. So um, go check that out. Um, so, uh, okay, so 10 months in, you guys are in the shops. Like, what would, what would you say the next, like, five-year goal is for bars? Yeah, I think increasing our marketing capabilities a little bit. Um, I think Arizona's, you know, really kind of deal oriented for sales and stuff. So learning, you know, what what deals are best and make the most sense as a company. Okay. But uh, certain things like that, you know, I think um, doing some on sites. On sites is something that we're trying okay. to increase. Okay, hey, uh, here, blaze everybody up. Appreciate yeah. you yeah. shaking bits of that. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, when you say like. Uh, uh, doing events and stuff like that uh what are some of the events that you found that you enjoy doing like have you guys uh in your history like there is the earl cup do you guys plan on having a booth at earl cup this year i think so yeah yeah Yeah. that's that's one of you're gonna be at um that because that's a honestly shit people pile out man people talk about it like and sometimes in a negative way but to me it's like yo did you see the line? There's like a lot of people <laughs> going this game. So it's like yeah. you, you might be one of the only ones thinking about that. So <laughs> a lot uh, of the yeah. lines that like the events we've been at have been, been yeah. pretty yeah. steady. Yeah. It's cool to see you. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pass over this uh oh the super move. It's almost like I saved uh <laughs> one would say the best for last over here. We're about to go I'll pass this over yeah. Richie right now. Um Okay, so how do you feel about uh you know, testing. Let's talk testing here in Arizona. You know, like you guys, uh, you know, now you've been going through it from the very beginning. You know, uh, um, how do you feel it is currently? Are you happy with the results uh, that we got to deal with? Yeah, you know, it's sometimes better than others. You know, I think things test consistently to an extent, but there's still, you know, too much variation where like one test can be like, ah, oh, that was on the lower side or whatever it may be. And, getting pop for certain things but right that's what i worry like do you have any worry about the asper is it aspergillus right? yeah that's the most common one that you know most cars you know are dealing with where like you send something in you're like you know you know it happens you know sometimes it's, it's part of the top bud that you know maybe something happened to it you know i don't you know something like that or false tests happen too sometimes yeah exactly because Last year, uh, AZDHS popped out like so many, and they all came back as it being like a facility thing. But it's like they put it out there like it's yours, you know what I mean? And it's like not yours, you guys have never had one, not to say that, you know, enough. but like they put it out there like it's the cannabis company, and it's like, damn, they're, they're catching flack for like the uh, for the lab. So I think that was kind of crazy. And um, just witnessing that, I always like to ask cannabis companies, if it, is it something that, like, you know, concerns you about? It's not a big problem, really, you know? Well, um, you gotta it's, do, it's more on the testing side of just, like, you know, yeah. what, what's your opinion? Yeah, you got to do, like, quality control, obviously, you know, some buds get too thick when you're growing it. Uh, you're trimming it up, like, you see it in there. That's part of, like, the uh, yeah, okay. process okay. for it, so... You know, obviously, I think most growers have seen it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something that you have to deal with. Um, uh, first, remedy. yeah. And that honestly sometimes comes with like picking strains, some that grow a little too thick, too, are a lot more susceptible to getting it. So, okay. You know, okay. So you pay attention to that as well. Yeah. yeah that's also a, a factor on, you know, selection. Exactly. Yeah. So, because. And I appreciate you saying that, too, about, like, you know, it's going to happen, right? Because that's what they say. If, you, if you're not battling some of these things at some point, yeah. then you're yeah. not being honest. You know? Because oh, exactly. everyone's yeah. battling this shit. Yeah. So it's like, 100%. so one of the things that has come up in the past, and, and I like to ask, is like, well, so what what happens to cannabis that uh, at bars that you find is uh, needs to be removed? Like, is it something that you guys... Yeah, 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 right away. I yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. and there is a like a, a, a one kind of re- uh, remediation thing you, you can do. Like right. you can get that sample sent back to two of the labs for what it failed for. If it passes those two of the labs, then compliantly, like you can sell that product. Right. But um, you know, if that if that fails, and then you have to. You know, okay. Yeah. So do you allow for like? Because I was gonna ask like you know, you know, with the product you guys have, are you in position to say uh, white label for companies and? like that if somebody out wanted to say like you know uh just start a, a brand would you wholesale to them do you have enough product to do that or, or yeah. would you do that 
Yeah, I mean, currently as a new brand starting out, you know, with, um, there is an oversupply, so I think there is an op- opportunity um, if it makes sense for both parties, you know? Nice. Yeah. Cool. So, um, and then just bulking out product, whether they do it like, on, on deli style or, you know, um, or if it goes in a cookies bag, you know. Yeah, yeah you know, it's a nice, <laughs> nice day of job, right? Come on, man. Put some little cookies in there. Come on. <laughs> I like it, man. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the the hemp situation are you are you guys kind of up to speed on this hemp thing going on right now with like the underneath 0.3 percent delta nine is yeah. considered hemp and like you know we're seeing it on the internet now for sure it's like, becoming more of a commodity yeah, yeah like uh like what are your thoughts on that yeah i, t- I mean it does affect a portion of you know a different market but like um it's something that has to be acted on and decided on what to do about it you know because there's there's new things that are being uh you know done without any type of uh yeah i don't know yeah. like yeah like it's wild because i think the big complaint about it is like testing like they're saying like oh you know like, uh and it's being sold like in gas stations and like get to the kids and things like that right. but like I don't, I don't stress too much on it getting to the kids only because I feel like I do my, I own a smoke shop, so I don't, you know, sell the minors and I feel right. like, you know, uh, there, to me, that's almost there. like a fucking, like a false flag, like a little propaganda, but, but the not having to get it tested, I think that is something, you know, where I, I could see where getting it, uh, required for it to be tested. But I think where I'm going with this is you guys grow yeah, cannabis, you get it tested. Um, uh, has there ever been a time that any of the genetics that you've gotten tested have been below the point three? Or do you look for it? Or do you, do you is that something off top that you like kind of notice? No, um, not for me. No? Yeah, yeah, I haven't noticed. Yeah, okay. I can't say. Yeah, yeah cause I'll be, I'll, I'll go through now, uh, and look at test results when I get cannabis in the industry and I found like three. That were point below point three. I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm like, I That's can crazy. sell this in the smoke shop. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, I'm almost out here trying to. Uh, I haven't approached those three yet. It's like, oh, actually, no, no, I did. I did approach one, and he never replied. And I was like, damn. I, I wonder how, how it would feel. I, I, I guess it probably wouldn't feel good, or no, if they would worry. Like, cause I know like the the license side really is against him right like you know what i mean and i don't know how you guys you know are, are like is it something that you would like to see they get tied up and like and like that kind of be closed up or are you okay with it i'm indifferent you know, about it really really yeah cool yeah nice Clash with the gods i gotta hit this blood real quick though. i think it's just interesting right like the, the whole like commercial side of cannabis and it coming out and like you know it's like now, when I voted for it, I was just like, yes, I want to be able to smoke weed, not get in trouble. I want to be able to own my pieces, carry my weed, whoop de all this shit. But, like, the business side, I never even really considered. And now I'm like, now we're witnessing it. We're seeing, like, okay, what about spray packs, man? Yeah, I mean, right? it's happening. Right? right? Like, it's and, and it's actually fairly fucking popular, right? Like, how would you guys consider allowing someone to, like, you know, put out a spray pack. Uh, and that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. They said, no, 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 no. Not cool. I love it. Oh, man. I'm going to punch your cars on a pass. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what about, what about the, um, you're seeing like, uh, you have the company uh, Moon Rocks. Yeah, this one was uh, the Super Bowl. So you see like the the moon rocks, uh, or maybe you have it. It's like the coated marijuana oh, yeah. and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, are you open to something like? I'm just kind of curious, like you know, like <coughs> where are are you guys like open to like? I don't think that's our niche. Yeah, you know, that's not. I don't yeah. think in our realm. I think some things that we would are uh, kind of like looking into doing is some like rosin carts. There we go. Uh, we want to start doing some of those. Uh, been doing a lot of R&D with different like hardware um, and trying to like figure out yeah like you know yeah most efficient way to do it because it rosin gets so thick it's like really viscous or not viscous so you have to get it to like uh, the right viscosity to be able to soak it up continually be able to pull out of it because I know also like it even like almost seems like it seals 
after you don't hit it for a while and you gotta like kind of like unclock it. Yeah, you know. Um, that that's fun though. I love I love having a card on there. Normally, I always have one anywhere I go and shut that. You know, it's, yeah. gotta have it. Um, I think down the line too, um, get like a VHL machine. Okay. Cool. Some live resin. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm hoping nice. by next year, you know, we have a, our own uh, kind of a hydrocarbon system going. Yeah, hey, I'm not you guys just like want to do it all. I like that, man. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not you know, but you want to do it in respect to where you want to see it, like yeah, yeah for your guys' goals. I love it. Um, let's see what I got, man. I was I was sitting back. Oh yeah, nice. So, why well, you guys? What about like breeders out here that have their own genetics? Like, have you guys ever considered having like? Arizona breeders, so with your their genetics inside the uh, at Barks. Sure, I mean we're I feel like we're pretty willing to try, you know, a lot of different different stuff out. And, you know, That's cool, man. So yeah, yeah hey, if you're out there in a breeder, you know, what I mean, shit, you know, hit them up. You know, I just I just think it's cool to uh, that you guys out here uh, representing Arizona like you are, and uh, you know that you see a lot of people complain that you know it's a lot of MSOs and things like that. So there's a lot, you know, like. I think Arizona is a very big, you know, market. It's different than the other one because of that. Um, so there's a, there's pros and challenges from both of those. Yeah, right. Um, let's see what else I got on over here. Where's your guys' next event coming up? You guys talked about doing events. I think you got it coming up over here in a couple of days back in uh, in Tempe. Yeah, we do. Excellent nice. Society. Yeah, nice, yeah, right man. We'll so that's cool. On the 24th. Nice. Yeah. That's love. Uh, uh, yeah, they and you're doing that with uh, if it's uh, the cannabis, right? The cannabis dispensary. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. That's love right be there. there uh, so, I think Sumus. Sumus. Oh you know, man, we yeah. say Sumus, huh? I, I'm on the Sumus. Sumus. Oh, Sumus. Yeah, yeah Sumus. 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 They, it's funny because they pop that out on their Instagram. Do you say Sumus or do you or say Sumus? Sumus? I didn't see that. Uh, I went Sum because like S U M is Sum. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did they say what? With the actual, I asked. What was the verdict? I, I think, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they say that uh, there isn't one. It's like they, they, I don't think there's an official one type shit. That's cool. Yeah, like they I think that. Open, yeah, like, leave it open. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Makes more talk about it, you know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Uh, where is that dispensary at? That uh, the cannabis. That is in Tempe. Okay, yeah. oh, that makes sense. On the right there, they're like shit, Tempe. That's yep, cool, yep. man. So it's a cool store that they have a little like kind of like spot in their in their lobby where there's plants growing, you know, as displayed. No and shit. And they look really good. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> man. I like legit wanted to do that here. I wanted to do that in the smoke shop. Yeah. Man, so how cool is that, man? Yeah, I wonder if they let like I bet they like let people smoke it too or to like harvest and shit like that. Goes <laughs> like, to sale, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no right. doubt, yeah. How crazy is that? It's pretty that's crazy. something cool right there. Man. Um well nice man, you guys came out to the high lounge, appreciate it always. Love being here. Thank yeah. To uh we got people uh, smoking it up. We got a game going on here in the finals, uh, conference finals. Um let's see. Who are you guys going for? Dallas. Nice game, I want to see. I'm a big ant fan right now, man. Like, uh, Anthony, like uh, yeah, Edwards falling out. Um, my boy over here is a, is a big Mavs fan, but okay, I'm gonna see. It's, it's, a it's a good looking team. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you guys mentioned how the pops was like uh, introduced to the scene through Mita. Do you guys uh, make Mita like a? a thing every month and make sure it was nice to go and network there you know i think yeah. uh, it definitely has that purpose yeah so yeah. Um, definitely met some good people there yeah they're fun too you know yeah mm -hmm. out, uh, good time yeah, the super yeah, good people man, I, you guys got it going down man it tastes really Appreciate good it. yeah Thank man you. like it's important how it smokes and okay you guys obviously got down the dry and the cure too, like uh, it's the most important step. Right, man. Like so, like uh, did you guys have like a did you focus on that when you're building out the warehouse? Yeah, that was a, a big thought, you know, like you know, airflow, um, air exchange, stuff like that, um, and then just being able to have that control, you know, to get to that tent. It's that point that you need to have a nice, have a nice little dry. Now. Do you pay attention? Are you interested at all in the science that's coming out about cannabis? Like when we talk about drying and 
carry. They say now, like, because it's been like the urban myth or like the the, the go to is the 6016. Now we're here, and maybe it's like 65, 58, uh, like you know, 65 degrees, and 58 uh, humidity is like the science behind it, right? And like, or something like that. I'm not sure exactly, but like, yeah, like, you know, did that make you change your? Not really. I think just wanting to see the results that you get, and you know, maybe making adjustments as you go. But um, I don't, I, I don't stray off too much. You know, if I'm in that 58, 60 range for um, humidity, all good. And then, yeah. You know, at least 60, um, 65 is still fine. But um, gotcha. I rock 60, 60. You yeah, just gotta get yeah, in that's there, classic, get right? in there, and uh, <laughs> check them out too. Go in there and feel. Yeah, have some sense of some uh, stem snapping kind of test and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that definitely helps. Now, it also made me uh, like uh, when you guys were talking about finding the genetics, is the, the grow time um, at all important? Like, do you have a limit that you'll allow a plant to grow? Yeah, I mean, if it's over 10 weeks, it makes it a little more challenging because okay. everything else is like nine or nine years. So, okay. you have that. A little bit of a hold up, you know, in the room uh, slows you down. Yeah, like the course of a year, a little you bit. You want to have quicker turnover times too. Yeah, if we're harvest within a year, for sure. Cool. Like flip times and stuff. So, you know, most our strains nine, a little longer for some of them, but um, it's a work at the work, you know. <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm a little more worth it. Yeah. yeah, right. That's what. That's one of the things that people talk about is a lot of times, uh, you know, in the in the farming industry. Of, Cannabis, because I like to call it farming, because I mean that's in this sense like when it's that scale, like you guys are yeah, farming yeah. cannabis, like so it's like when it gets to that scale, like you know people want to be able to get on these timings so you don't because if you extend it out, you end up over a year like you see out on the harvest, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So it's like yeah. man, like it's that's a lot of money. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. It's kind of, so it's just interesting. Like that's what I was saying when it comes to the business of cannabis, you know, a little bit like that. Where it's like those are factors. Be smart about it. Yeah. yeah. So, Oh, man, I appreciate that. I just love talking to people in the business, man. I've loved smoking cannabis my, this in my entire life. But, like, a damn near, a, a 100% of majority, but, like, you know, uh, yeah. Um, interesting. Do you feel like you guys were introduced to cannabis earlier, possibly because of Pops? Or do you think that, uh, did, did he, like, try to hide it from you guys at all, or was it pretty open? He did hide it for a little bit, okay. you know? He was just, because that was back when, like, it was early, so like, right. the Fed's gonna come in and like do something. Like, it was a lot more like, you don't know what's gonna happen. It was yeah. such an early time in the market. So I think he was scared, you know, for yeah. sure. But um, he definitely helped us get into the, you know, find that big passion. You know, like, um, it helped. I think carve this pathway, which is cool. Yeah. You know, so like, super appreciative of of how the opportunity worked out. Yeah. Who grows better weed, him, uh, him or you guys? Uh, no. yeah. hey. Sorry, Dad. No. Hey, was, was Pops ever like growing like that? No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's he's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he loves it. Does, I was gonna say, does now he, he's super does, proud. Does he hit you guys for that weed though? Like, does he like, yo, make sure you keep me a rotation? He always wants to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. He's that's cool. uh, he's not much of a, of a smoker though. No, not the big smoker. That's uh, does he um, now is he someone that you guys kind of still go to for advice? I mean, obviously, you know, like you know. Being a mentor, and having the history does. Uh, do you find yourself still tapping into that resource? It's why we're doing like expansion plans, and you know, we're doing like something with the architect. I would say bigger picture stuff. You know, cool. He wants to be involved in, but operations daily, you know, not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool, man. You guys out there just getting it. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's obviously your guys' thing. Gosh, right? Yeah, new, yeah. new yeah. generation, man. Um. I have a couple more questions. We'll get get back to smoking out the lounge over here. I know you guys do your thing. Um, let's talk about uh, bars. You know what? What what is bars? What, what was that? What was the meaning behind the name? Uh, yeah, yeah, so like I always loved like the word cultivar. You know, like um, it's like that was yeah. kind of like a play on it. So like, cultivars. Yeah. So we kind of just cut it off, and made, it, made it shorter and and sweet. I guess. Yeah. Um, I liked it. Yeah. yeah, and I think also going back to like all the different cultivars uh, we want to kind of have at our grow and we want it to be like, you know, showcase everyone's, uh, all the breeders like they Yeah, you're keeping it open. Like you're saying that this is a collective yeah. of cultivars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Black, yeah. 
That's cool right there. Did you guys like battle like between each other on what the name was going to be? What, what, what was it almost? <laughs> well, it was pretty quick. Yeah, we had some, some what was family it, meetings about it too. Like, just talking about all of them. But uh, yeah. what was what was one that was almost going to be? Ooh, man, what did we like? Third Eye. Third Eye Farm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I'm I'm open. Open. No yeah. You guys want it? Yeah. Do some cool, it. cool designs. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It's out there. Oh man, marijuana man. You guys uh dope man. Good energy. How old are you guys? Thirty one. Thirty one? Twenty six, man. In the cannabis world. Yeah, you know, it. like yeah. it's like most, un, most of it. yeah. uncharted territories happening right in front of you. You know what I mean? Like fuck yeah, man. Like you guys gotta be you feel like you're living the dream? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Like I love what I do. Uh, sure. That's so, yeah. I mean it started out as just a part time job for me and now it's become Passion, passion in my life. I'm gonna tell you too what's dope about it is you guys are going fucking fire, right? Because I think that's what's important at the end. Because, yeah, like it's cool to do it, but if you don't go fire, you're not gonna be doing it very long, right? Because it's like people aren't gonna buy your shit. Yeah. So the fact that you guys are out here growing, I'm talking, it's turps. Do you guys test your turps? Uh, most most new batches, yeah. Okay, for sure. Yeah, I think you should because you're testing it's higher turps. Yeah. I can tell you. Well, yeah. you gotta see what's you gotta in see there. What's up? Put uh, it on the jar, man. Especially new streams. Want to see it? Yeah. 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 Higher the turps. You know, like, telling you, that's in my opinion, that's where is a higher barometer than anything else. Like when, it, when I see that, when I see that turps is over two percent, I know it's gonna be smacking. Because I've even I had some one point five percent or smack. So like when it's over two, I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, off taste. I know you guys got that turf test in high ones. Proud to you guys, man. Um, uh, would love to do things with you in the future. You know, like the yeah. High Lounge. We'd love to have you guys uh, uh, yeah. as like uh, you know uh, a spot that you feel you can come in, do some pheno testing. Maybe, I love you know what I'm saying? Uh, got some coming up. Hey, look, mm-hmm. if not the whole High Lounge, I at least want to get put on some kind of like little uh, small team. Okay, come on, man. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I ask everybody that's close to Barbara, you got to, because I know you guys need to get that feedback on what you think is, like, what, which, which Fino yeah. is good, right? Dude, yeah. I'm actually running the uh, Exodus cheese in my tent at home right now, a little Fino hunt of it. I want to get cheese. So bad. Yeah. So we'll get a good cheese. So you're still growing at home. Uh-huh. That's sure. cool. Just uh, flowering out at home, just so, you know, I can have nice... Uh, time in between harvest to like just clean my tent out. And That's cool. Stress. Yeah, not yeah. Stress. yeah. Nice. What about yourself? You going to home? No, I don't. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. I used to. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were. It's just too much. You were the where I would get my weed. And yeah. 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 That's classic. <laughs> Bro was going to be back then or what? Oh yeah. yeah. Nice. For sure. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah, that was cool. The man. Best. Everyone would always. Was there any lanes that back then? Uh, like there was like maybe because Tucson had some extractors back then, right? like yeah. Apocalypse. Yeah. You know, yeah. Shadow yeah. Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah. Like, uh, did you have any kind of like, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know what all allegedly or you know whatnot. You know what I mean, but but were you get were you out there? Uh, at all or, or no because the, was, the family's was, always in license huh? yeah I, mean, I, I was too small like I wasn't like anything like that I got more you. Like, you know, smaller scale cool. less less big you know and, yeah. and, you know, known but uh, once this came online it was just like this was the avenue you know <laughs> so did you wait to start growing well, obviously when you moved out of Pops place right because yeah. it's that's funny that's crazy that's crazy and his dad's got a whole ass license man. I love this all right well, marijuana, man, we've talked to these guys years off. I hope you guys got a lot of information. Uh, let's talk about where people can find you. If I didn't get a question out that you want to hear, um, where it. can they, yeah, yeah, hey, where can they reach you? Uh, you know, Tucson, we're uh, Prime Leaf Stores, Halo, uh, Botanica, Nature Man, uh, Soul Flower, on the other store in Tucson now. Um, our ceiling should be launching soon. So, hey, I love Earth Soon. They've come out here, fire products, Earth Soon. Yes, yeah, add the bars. Baby, come on, add the bars. And if anyone wants to ask any questions to uh, Instagram, you're the one that run the Instagram. Yeah, yeah. hit me up. Oh, you talking cool. directly to Always the happy guy. to yeah. share what I know. Nice. Yeah. Tap in, guys. Uh, good energy from these two. Uh, I felt it when I met them. Uh, it's cool to hear that history, right? That's very dope. And I'm telling you that it, it is gas. Yeah, so I went out there. I tried the super proof. I'm signing. 
Unfortunately, I can't. I didn't. I'm not a GMO. Yeah, that's all right. I knew someone was telling us. I knew someone was Oh, here we go. <laughs> but, uh, and then, uh, the, that. So I love shrimp cake. Yo, yeah. you got, but I, I mean, okay. If if the other two are smackers and you're a GMO fan, I'm telling you, probably gonna love that over there. So, uh, thank you so much for coming out again, guys. Bless us all, merch. Bless the lounge with a sesh right here. Um, we're gonna continue to do that. And um, and again, thank you for tuning in. Hi in Arizona. Yeah, any shout outs? Yeah, you guys, any, any, any last words or shout outs you want to? You know, um, what you got? <laughs> shout outs. Uh, <laughs> Well, shout out, I mean, shout out to you for having us. You know? yeah, appreciate yeah, you, appreciate yeah. you hosting. You know? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's been fun. That this is our first podcast, and uh, oh, thanks for everything for walking across the finish line. Oh, I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it. Nice. It's, uh, yeah. It's been fun. But, um, yeah. yeah. Nice. And then um, I guess my last question would be: One of the things that I like for High in Arizona is to always talk to the people that are actually in the industry. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a consumer. You know. Uh, 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 but when I talk about things, it's it's from a perspective of a consumer, and I want to bring in like almost like the cannabis correspondents out there, right? Would you guys be open to when things happen in Arizona that I can reach out and maybe just get your perspective on it? Yeah, yeah. Happy to, man. of course. Yes. <laughs> We're growing, okay? We're growing out there. We're doing our thing. Um, all right, well, marijuana man, appreciate it. Uh, we will see you again here shortly, marijuana. Uh, thank you to all the sponsors out here. Uh, Lunchbox, True Med, Drip Oils, uh, Never Low Grass Gallery, True Infusion, Desert Valley Testing, uh, Alien Labs Connected, uh, Fifth Finger Studio, uh, The High Lounge for, obviously that's the Shameless Plug, uh, High Maiden Smoke Shop, Shameless Plug, you know I own that shit, but Marijuana, we'll see you again, uh, thank you guys, Marijuana, and uh, Shake It Yeah, love it.